Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be going through my team strategies in NHL 16 that I'm using so far. Uh, obviously, if there's tuner sets in the future, uh, I might change these in the future as well. So if you want to keep updated with my team strategies, subscribe to me if you are new to this channel. Anyways, I get asked this question on a daily basis, just people that want to improve their game, try to get up the divisions, and uh, they look for me for answers for some reason. So, anyways, I will show you guys my team strategies. I've been doing pretty well. Uh, I've been playing a majority of my games with Hut Roulette. If you don't know what Hut Roulette is, I started off with a bronze team, and uh, we were able to build our team up to the point where we haven't lost a game for quite some time. We are on an eight-game win streak right now. I'll quickly show you guys my recent games as well. I think it's a good way to validate that, you know what, I am winning some games here. I'm not just losing games and telling you guys some false strategies. Uh, these are strategies that I use on a daily basis, and it is helping me win lots of games. So, I'll just scroll down here, and uh, I'll just show you guys the wins I had. There were a couple losses when I started off with the bronze team in Hot Roulette, so you gotta ignore that a little bit. But I don't think I've lost one single game in regulation with my main team so far. It's been a pretty good season, uh, other than my Hut Roulette series where I lost three games in a row. So anyways, we are now going to go into showing you guys my team strategies. And the, like I said, these will maybe change in the future, uh, just because if there's new tuner sets that EA releases uh, into the game, it could change up how the game is played. And uh, these strategies are basically, they might be useless uh, a couple months from now or a couple or four or five months from now so you want to stay updated with my videos and uh, I, will sh I will tell you guys all the updates for team strategies and all that good stuff anyways uh, I find that four checking and a neutral zone trap the one and four is a pretty good strategy um, for four checking though one two two aggressive is solid uh, my guys are always four checking which I like and there's always like three guys around in the zone and not just kind of guys drifting back and you got to have it on one two two aggressive a uh, neutral zone one to four um, I like to trap the player. I usually like chasing, but anytime I chase with two or three players, I always know that I have two guys back, and that's why I like to use the 1-4. I don't like trapping people to the point where they can't get into the zone. That's kind of like, that's kind of garbage a little bit, but if you run at the guy a little bit with the 1-4 neutral zone tactic, uh, you, you'll never get, have a defender behind, and you'll never uh, get beat on a breakaway with this method, if you play it correctly. So anyways, next up is the trap and 4 check. And a lot of people like to put this on zero, but I like to put it maxed out on six. I want all my guys rushing into the zone and attacking the puck. That's my main goal. And of course, this might change in the future if, say, they tone down poke checking. Because poke checking in this game is so crucial uh, to getting wins in this uh, in NHL 16. So if you want to practice your poke checking, you probably should do that. Be a little bit more careful with them. So now we're going on to offensive pressure. And I like to have it all the way set onto full attack. Uh, I've tried every single other one uh, that's here, I guess, and I've never found anything better than the offensive pressure on full attack. So you want to keep it on that. Uh, the offensive pressure, I've been uh, twiddling around a bit. Around a bit. Usually, I am on high pressure, but I found this year with high pressure, my guys get out of position a lot. So I put it on puck side attack, and I'm finding that my defenders are blocking the puck more often. Um, more people are just getting in the way of the puck, and that is why I like the puck side attack for defensive pressure this year more than high pressure, which I've always kept in NHL 15. But this year, puck side attack is a lot better in my opinion. And defensive strategy, I have it on tight point. And the reason why I have it on tight point is because uh, right off the faceoff, people love to bring it back to the point and shoot the puck. And the tight point does help a lot in terms of getting that guy to skate right to the point and get that poke check on. And that defensive strategy is pretty good. And now we're going on to penalty killing. Uh, I have it on large box. I like to have everybody nice and spread out. Attacking the puck carrier, carrier like it said. And uh, so far the penalty kill is pretty good. Um, people still score some goals from time to time. So you might want to fiddle around with what you are comfortable with. Large box is what I'm comfortable with because I'm really good at poke checking. And that makes me able uh, to get out of the zone nice and quick. But if you're a guy that uh, maybe struggles with defense a little bit, you might want to put it on something like passive box where guys uh, group up a little bit more in the defensive zone and uh, they can't shoot the puck too easily. And uh, your, your chances of getting scored on will be definitely less if you use the passive box if you're not too good at poke checking. But if you are good at poke checking, large box is definitely the way to go for penalty killing. Power play, always overload. Um, just getting those guys in position. Uh, I've always trusted overload in every single NHL series. So overload is the way I go. And then for a power play carry and dump, I have it just about halfway. Uh, I want the people to be, I guess, deciding whether or not they should be rushing into the zone or if I should be shooting the puck. It should be half and half. 
I don't want my guys to be doing one thing more than the other because that does limit my own strategies of what I want to do to score some goals. So I usually have that right down in the middle. And finally, let's go into the forward lines, and I'm not going to talk about them too much. But so far, uh, carry and dump. Uh, carry dump, I like to have it on like just a little bit less than half. Same with cycle and shoot. And I like to have my energy levels nice and high for my first line. And it's definitely been a lot uh, different this year in terms of energy efficiency. Um, this year, energy drains so fast. So um, instead of maxing out all the way to the top, having it just around there, just about more than half, is pretty good in terms of keeping your players nice and healthy. And the don't block and block... Uh, this basically means I want the guys to block more shots than uh, don't block. The only time I don't want them to block it is, say, if they're blocking the actual net and they're covering the goalie. That's why you want to lower it just a little bit, in my opinion. I'm not sure if that actually does anything, but uh, so far, I've been winning games with the strategy, and it's been pretty good. Uh, and overload, it pretty much is the exact same thing. I lower the efficiency just a little bit down, the energy levels a little bit down, so it saves more energy for my first line, which has the most uh, of my best players on there. Uh, once again, third line, it goes a lot down uh, in terms of energy levels. I want them to be more efficient, and I put the block on maximum. I want all my guys that are grinders or power forwards to be blocking the puck because they're big enough to do it. And the fourth line, we also got a little bit of a different uh, strategy, I guess. A carry dump. I want them to dump the puck a little bit more than actually carry it. Uh, and dump the puck doesn't necessarily mean going to the red line and then chipping it in. It, all, it could also mean like being at the blue line and just kind of bringing it around the boards. And my guys on the fourth line always do so well with picking up the puck on the right side or the left side when I ring it around the board. So it's pretty solid. Uh, cycle and shoot also nice and low. Uh, energy levels are very, very low. I want the efficiency to be as high as possible. Fourth line is just out there to heal up my first line guys. But I don't necessarily want them to be... Uh, un like not have any any energy at all uh, playing the game so I have it raised just a little bit and once again block I want it on maximum so defensive pairings are a little bit up to you um, for sure uh, if you're really good at poke checking uh, raising this a little bit more definitely helps out with uh, with your game style and uh, having this up when, if you're really good at stick checking or poke checking uh, raising it higher is a little bit better but I don't really want my guys to be rushing up the play i want them to be rushing up a little bit but not too much i want them to choose when it's the right time if say there's a three on two or a two on one i want them to be ready as possible i don't want them pinching cycle and shoot i have it on just a little bit less than half and i just want them to cycle the puck a little bit more rather than shoot because if you are constantly shooting the puck it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to score more goals. You need to set up your guys in position. And the cycle option gets your guys ready and uh, gets ready for the puck at all times, which I like. I honestly should lower this a little bit more. Uh, but I, you know what? I'll just keep it there for now just to show you guys. Defensive pairing is pretty much the same throughout the whole thing. Um, and that's pretty much it for my team strategy. So if you guys did enjoy this, leave it a like. I know a lot of people have asked me about team strategies all the time. Uh, so hopefully you guys will learn something from this and uh, you guys will implement it to your own NHL 16 HUT teams. And uh, I think it will help you guys a lot for sure. Uh, team strategies are a big reason to help or a big, they play a big role to helping you uh, win some games and just playing to your style. Don't be afraid to change these up to your liking. Even though I have made this video for you guys and uh, sorry, I'm like, my throat is so dry. I apologize. I've been talking for like seven minutes straight. But like I said, don't be afraid to change the strategies. Everybody plays differently. It's not just a one video for everybody. It's more of like, just to tell you guys how, what the framework is and what you should be doing uh, to improve your game. And that is basically the best way for me to play. Uh, if you want to copy it or if you want to change it up just a tiny bit, it is up to you. Uh, but anyways, let me know in the comments how it works for you. And uh, if you guys did enjoy, once again, leave a like on this video. Subscribe for more uh, team strategy videos. If that's what you're only watching, uh, you can subscribe for that. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh, nice pass. Come on, let's see what we can do here. We're going to rifle it. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. The drag back wrister. Finally, something a little bit more difficult.